Hey guys, welcome to your 12.6 notes on permutations and combinations. Now those are some kind of weird words, but hopefully they'll make sense by the end of this lesson. Um, our objective today is that students will be able to find permutations and combinations. So um, our key idea of the day is that you can use counting methods to find the number of possible ways to choose objects with and without regard to order. And that's what we'll be doing out all day is we're choosing things. So here's the deal. You decide to have a bonfire at the beach um, with your family and you can make some s'mores, which is like one of my personal favorite snacks. And you bring three options of graham crackers. You can have honey graham crackers, that's like normal, the cinnamon graham crackers, which are the best kind, and then also chocolate. You can also choose how many marshmallows to have. One marshmallow or two marshmallows on your s'mores. And then finally, you can choose what kind of chocolate do you want to have. Do you want a regular chocolate bar or do you want to get a peanut butter cup in with your s'more? If I have inspired you to make some gourmet s'mores, s'more may, if you will, um, and you want to pause the video and go ahead and make a s'more, that's great. We'll see you in approximately five minutes. For those of you who uh, did not make s'more or got one and came back, there are two ways that you can count the number of s'more possibilities. One, you can make a tree diagram, which takes a lot of time and a lot of space. And I'm not going to make you do that. Um, I just showed you what it looks like. So what we're doing here is we want to say, all right, let's pretend that I took a honey um, graham cracker. I got two marshmallows and regular chocolate. So that's one way to have a s'more. Just pick a different color, huh? You can pick this option. Or you can get a regular graham cracker, two marshmallows, and a peanut butter for your chocolate. Oh, and that's different from getting a cinnamon graham cracker, two marshmallows, and peanut butter from your chocolate. Right? Okay. Um, so there are lots of different options, and we judge that by all the different paths on our diagram. But the way to find the number of different combinations is you add up all the paths. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we have twelve options of s'mores. However, there's a much faster way to do this. And the faster way is called the multiplication counting principle. And if we were to use the multiplication counting principle, we would just count out our option, mm -hmm, count up our options, and then multiply them together. So for our options of graham cracker, we've got three. And for our options of marshmallows, we've got two. And for our options of chocolate, we've got two options. We multiply across and we get 12 options. So still the same answer. So, in a general case, the multiplication counting principle <laughs> says if there are m ways to make a first selection and n ways to make a second selection, then there are m times n ways to make those selections with both categories. For example, if you have nine shirts and four pairs of pants, how many outfit combinations do you have? Oh, we're going to assume here that all the shirts go with all the pants. Um, and that would be 9 times 4, which is 36 outfit combinations. That, that'll that settle you for a whole month. So good job. So that's the multiplication counting principle. Now, another fun thing that we use in math is called a factorial. So a factorial is represented with an exclamation point. So n factorial is n exclamation point. So when you look at this, we don't we don't pronounce this pronounce this as n exclamation point. This is not n. Um, it's just it's n factorial. Okay. So n factorial is when you multiply. You take the product of the integers from n to one which means you multiply all the numbers until you get to one. So seven factorial is seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. 
which is a big number that I'm not going to calculate for you right in my head. On the other hand, uh, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Um, we define 0 factorials to be 1, so that's a fun fact. Now, factorials are the subject of several math jokes. In fact, if you're a Redditor, there's an entire subreddit um, devoted to unexpected factorials. Um, the jokes being that, you know, if someone says, oh yeah, my daughter is turning six, like, she's six! Wow! It's like, she's, she's six factorial? Because six factorial is six times five times four times three times two times one. So she's 30 times 12 times two. So she's 720. No, that's wrong. She's 360 times two, which is 720 years old. Wow. She's like super old. So there you go. That's a joke. So now that we know what a factorial is, we're going to use that in two more definitions and then we'll be done. Our first definition is called a permutation. Now a permutation is what happens when you have a bunch of objects and you arrange them in a specific order. A certain order. For example, if I wanted to find all the permutations of ABC, remember that permutations is that order matters. So if I need to arrange ABC, that means that ABC is different from A, ooh, mm -hmm. <laughs> A, C, B, which is different from B, A, C, which is different from B, C, A, C, A, B, and C, B, A. Think of it this way. Think of it like a race. Okay? And in our first race, A took first place. And, in our, and then B took second place. And C took third place. Okay? That's one way for the race to come out. However, in this race, so apparently C overtook B in the last minute. It was very suspenseful or something. Um, so in that race, C got second place and B got third place. So those are two different outcomes. So we count them as two different things because order matters. Okay. Um, so let's do an example. Let's say that we're playing baseball and you need to find different lineups, right? or sorry, you need to find different batting orders. Okay. So a baseball lineup has nine positions. We've got nine players and you want to find out how many different batting orders you can have with nine players. We're going to calculate this in this way. So for our first position, or, um, we can have nine positions, so I'm going to lay out nine places. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I just barely left room for an answer. Okay. So in our first position, there's nine possibilities of players. Anyone can fill that spot. Now when we're choosing who comes next, we have eight options because everybody else is left except for the person we picked. Now that we've picked two people, there are seven options left for third place, six for fourth place, and then five, four, three, two, one. Okay? Because after you've picked all your eight players, there's only one person left who can fill your last spot. Now this is very similar to our s'mores example. We want to figure out how many different possibilities we have here. We're going to multiply across. And that will come out to a very big number, but hmm, 
Where have we seen this pattern before? This is nine factorial. Okay, it's nine times eight times seven times seven, four, da, 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 da. right? And so this is actually equal to nine factorial, which when we multiply it out is 362,880. That's how many different ways to arrange them there are. Well, so many, so many. Okay, so a permutation notation. If ever you see this little n, big P, little r, like that, we're going to call that permutation notation. Um, and we read it like n pick r, like that. So we say n pick r. I guess I should put this here like that. So the expression n pick r represents the number of permutations of taking n objects and arranging them r at a time. Um, let's say that we have nine players on our baseball team, but we only can pick four of them for some reason. That's what we would use this for. Um, maybe we're just picking our baseman, I guess, or our baseman and our catcher or something. Um, but remember, permutation. Permutation means that order matters. And we calculate NPR. Oh, that's a radio station also. Uh, N pick R is calculated by N factorial over in parentheses N minus R and whatever that number is, factorial. This is going to be one of our key ideas, so make sure you uh, make this very clear. You love it. You hang on to it. You keep it somewhere safe in your notes. So let's say that we have some extra players on our baseball team, which is a good, <laughs> a good life choice to have, right? In case someone gets injured or someone is sick or whatever. Um, you still want to calculate batting orders, so that's going to be nine positions. But this time we're picking from 13 players. Okay. So here, 13 is going to be our N value because we are arranging 13 people. We're picking from 13 people. So this will be our N. Um, and then we're picking nine of them at a time. So nine will be our R. Now that we have our R, and now that we have our N, let's plug them in to our permutation notation formula. So whenever we have n, we're going to replace that with 13. So 13 in here. Whenever we have r, we're going to replace that with a 9. So we have 13 pick 9 is 13 factorial all over 13 minus 9 factorial. This will come out to be... Oh, I forgot the little dot. There you go. Okay. Um, this will come out to be 13 factorial all over uh, 13 minus 9 is 4 factorial. Cool. And now we can simplify it a little bit more before we plug it into our calculator. Because remember, what does 13 factorial mean? That means 13 times 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 times 8 all the way down to one. Okay, and four factorial is four times three times two times one. But guys, this is a fraction. So check out what's gonna happen here. We're gonna have some major reduction happening because this four reduces with this four this three with this three, this two with this two, this one with this one. Isn't that nice? That's like always gonna happen with permutation notation. 
So it turns out the calculation we need to do is this and this alone. Now that's a big number. So we plug it into our calculator and that comes out to be 259 million 459,200. Um, that's a lot. Okay. In fact, that's, oh, so that's our final answer. We're done with this problem. But you guys, remember how many we had for nine players? We had 362,000 about, and here we have almost 260 million. We increased by a factor of 715. So that's 715 times as many um, as many orders as if we had nine players. So just by adding in four subs, you have over 700 times as many options. Isn't that crazy? I think that's totally wild. Math is so cool. Okay, so I said we have two more definitions. The first one was a permutation in which order mattered. And now we're going to learn about a combination. So a combination is when order does not matter. Um, so a combination is a way to arrange objects in no specific order. It's like if I want to pick the top three of something without placing them in an order. Um, so the combinations then of ABC, if the, if the order doesn't matter, there's only one combination of ABC, and that is ABC. Because that's the same thing as BCA is the same thing as CAB is the same thing, right? It doesn't matter how we arrange them. It's just, it's all the same. Okay, so there's going to be a lot fewer options to make a combination than of a permutation. So, um, the ex to find the number of combinations possible, we use combination notation. And so, just like we had NPR, this time we have NCR, when th we say this, N choose R. And that represents the number of combinations of N objects chosen R at a time. And we calculate this by saying that N C R equals N factorial all over R factorial times N minus R factorial. Again, love this. Keep it in your notes somewhere and hang on to it. So again, when we choose them, remind yourself that order does not matter. So let's say that you want to make a leadership board of four people in your class. Um, and you have 23 people in your class. How many different four people groups can you make? That is, if you have an n value of 23... Um, and you want to choose four of them, how would you find that? Well, go ahead and take your, what is this called? Combination notation. Um, and every time that we have an N, we're going to replace that N with 23. And every time you have an R, we're going to replace that R with four. So that gives us that 23, it goes three places here, and four goes everywhere else. And this is like the frozen color scheme. Okay. Uh, so 23 choose four is 23 factorial all over four factorial times 23 minus four factorial. So that'll simplify to 23 factorial over 4 factorial times uh, 23 minus 4 is 19, 19 factorial. Again, um, I know that math is exciting, but you don't read this like 23 over 4, 19, <laughs> Okay. 
Um, and without doing all the little calculations out, we plug all that into our calculator. Comes out to 888,000, sorry, 8,855, 8,855. Okay. Now this is counting, um, assuming that order does not matter. So if we wanted to pick a leadership board, we wanted to pick a group who would help lead our class, and we said, yeah, so we've got Cash and Cece and Michaela and Ryder. That's our group. That's who's in our group. It doesn't, like, rearranging their names doesn't affect anything. We're just like, oh yeah, that's our group. Okay, cool. Order doesn't matter. However, as soon as we assign positions, positions means it's a permutation. So if Ryder were the class president and Cash were our vice president, Michaela our secretary and Cece our treasurer, that would be a different selection than if, you know, Ryder were um, our secretary and Michaela were our president. That would be different. That's a permutation. But here, we don't care about order. We just care about selecting these people. So, the key idea of the day is the difference between a permutation and a combination. As we make our summary, go ahead and copy all of your permutation notations and bring them down here. So remember that to calculate a permutation, you have this pattern. You have n factorial over n minus r factorial. Sweet, I'm actually gonna make that a little bit smaller. Okay, and then r combination notation is this guy right here. So they're similar because they're both ways to choose objects. They're both ways to calculate how many options you have when you choose things. However, with a permutation, order matters. And with a combination, order doesn't matter. As we compare them, look at their formulas. How are they similar? Well, they both have an n factorial up on top. And they also both have an n minus r factorial on bottom. The only difference is that our combination has that extra little r factorial in the denominator as well. Okay, let's see if you understood. If I wanted to select how many different ways to pick three flowers for a bouquet from a selection of 15 flowers, that would be a combination because order doesn't matter. <laughs> They're just, I'm picking which three I want. Um, if I said how many ways to arrange the books on your shelf, that would be a permutation because the order that you put the books on matters. Um, it wouldn't matter if I said, hey, just like choose books to put on your shelf, but here I specifically said arranging and arrange would be a permutation because arrange implies order. And then finally, how many different combinations you can have for your locker? This is actually a trick question. You want to say it's a combination, right? But it's actually a permutation because your locker combination order matters. If your combination is 5, 13, uh, 8, but instead you enter 8, 5, 13, that would be wrong. Or if you entered the numbers in order, 5, 8, 13, that would still be wrong. They need to be this specific order. So order matters. So that was, that was tricky, but cool. 
So, key idea, permutation, order matters. Combination, order does not matter. Have a great time on your homework.